Okay, everyone, it's time to start our meeting. So we'll just, um, we're live streaming. So we'll um, get that going. And we can see Andrew, Andrew Brown's um, zooming in, doing a bit of skiting there. Yeah. That's you better good. not wake the baby up, Andrew. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, thanks. Okay, um, welcome everyone to the service delivery committee meeting for the 16th of May. Uh, great to see everyone here. Um, do we have any apologies? No, nope. wonderful, that's great. Move on then to disclosure, disclosure of members' interests. Okay, nothing there, cool. Any late items? Wonderful, okay. Could we then confirm the order of the meeting? Uh, thank you, Lou, and the seconder. Uh, thank you, Bruce. All in favour, please say aye. aye. Against, carried. Thank you. Then we'll go to the confirmation of the open minutes of our last meeting. And those are on pages eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, and 13. Roger's going to move that they are a true and correct record and a seconder, please. Mike, all, all in favour, please say aye. aye. Against, carried. Thank you. Okay, so um, first um, business item up is the Transportation Activity Report, and I see Brian Hudson there. Welcome, Brian. And um, yeah, I'll hand it over to you uh, to present the report. Marina, Madam Chair and, and Councillors. Thank you very much. Uh, so I'll, I'll take the report as read and just add um, one item of information. So at the end of the report, it says that we were having some difficulty getting passenger transport uh, data from the regional council. Uh, so just uh, late last week, we did get an update. Um, so we have got some detail in a spreadsheet. So if any councils are interested in that, we can provide it to you. But the headline figure is that uh, bus usage at the end of March is at 126,000 trips for the year to date, uh, which is a 25% increase on the same time in 2019, uh, the 2019 year being the last year before COVID uh, disrupted things. So, uh, yeah, 25% increase uh, yeah. on that. Yes, yeah. Roger. I think that's uh, an excellent move to get that 25. I'm more interested in what the individual trip departures average occupancy is, because we know we're investing in additional departures going from 16 to 26. And I just want to have a look at the occupancy to ensure that those trips are being put in places where there is demand. Yeah. Have you got, did they send you Yes, that, that? so there is some of that detail in the spreadsheet that oh, I look forward lovely. to you. Thank you. Yeah, no, thanks, Brian. And of course, um, I'm very keen on the individual trips, but where, so TMO versus Cambridge as well. Yep. So will that be circulated to all councillors maybe in the Friday mail out or yes, something? Yes, that, yeah. that'd be fine, we can do that. Excellent. Yep. Thank you. All right, um, more questions. Lou. Yeah, thank you, through you, Madam Chair. Um, Brian, just a question on the Cambridge Road TMO to roundabout, that's a T9, T14 development. Just how's that progressing? Because I've had a fair bit of flack from a few people that are holding up on their development. So, uh, you know, with titles, et cetera. Right. Yep. Uh, so it, it is getting closer. There has been some progress with the negotiations there. Um, and it's that uh, combination of, um, I guess, you know, landowners affected by the works that council wants to do with a roundabout, but there's also landowners affected by works that the subdivider has done or will do, uh, which are at issue there. But uh, there is some progress there. Thank you. Thank you very much. Okay. Any other questions? Uh, yes, Susan. Uh, thanks, Brian. Hey, and just a quick question about the Chanel Place um, old bridge. Have we got a timeline on when the pipes, the water and wastewater pipes, might be transferred to the new bridge so that the old one can be removed? Have we got a time frame on that at all? No, I don't have a time frame at the moment. Um, it has been. I guess the, yeah, there's a really high workload on those contractors. Um, and so we did go out and try to get prices from contractors and the prices came in uh, ridiculously high. And so we've had to, I guess, delay that until we can get a, um, 
you know, a little bit more capacity in the in the industry to get it done. But it, I mean, it's not impacting on either the pipes or the the, the operation of the new bridge. So um, yeah. yeah, it's a matter it's of yeah. Yeah, when. Uh, just on that there. There are a couple of plans here showing the decorative panels for the two bridges. Yeah, I think um, so. So uh, there's three copies of each one there if people are interested to see what they look like. And it's, cool. it's labelled on the plan Chanel or Mangapiko or Halpo Road. Oh, I really appreciate that, that um, Brian, because I was quite interested in that. Yeah, yeah, I think it'd be great for us to be um, yeah, aware of what the designs are going to look like in that. Yeah, and do you have the name of the artist that's that's um, involved with it? I don't oh. off the top of my head. Sorry. Mm. No. Okay. But, um, I presume it's, it's a local, local artist, though. Yes. Yeah. That was going to be my next question. Um, mm. Any ideas when the de decorative panels might be um, up and installed? Yep. So these ones are manufactured, and they've just sprayed the coating on it. That gives it that nice, even Cortean steel rust look. Cool. Uh, so they'll be you know, installed within the next couple of weeks. Oh, oh fantastic. Excellent. Yeah. Great news. Yeah. Wonderful. Oh, wonderful. I'm curious to have a look at them. Thanks very much, Brian. Okay, um, Bruce. Uh, Brian, with Nata Perry Road um, rehabilitation, where you call it fixing it, what's the cost of council or what, what could go to? Have you got any figures roughly? Uh, the the figure is about $300,000, and that's fully funded by Waka Kotahi. Oh, good. Mm -hmm. And one other note, Madam Chair. Yeah. Um, with the CCTV, finding now putting better cameras in, and linking them possibly with community cameras, is that going to be more beneficial than what's there now? Uh, so the new cameras uh, going in are um, you know, following that strategy that we previously brought to council. So uh, a mix of uh, point tilt zoom type cameras that the community uh, group doing the monitoring can operate when they want to, to, to pan around and, and zoom in on activities that might be happening on the street along with those automatic number plate recognition cameras, which will link, you know, directly back to the police database and alert them. Um, Brian, I've got a couple of questions. One, um, it mentioned about the Hall Street um, ceiling work and the consultation that's going on with the community. It'd be great to hear how that's going. Um, yeah, it's it's been, you know, a, a sensitive issue in the past. So it'd be great to hear um, yeah, whether or not that the, the proposals are being well received. Yes. Yep. Well, I, I imagine, yeah, certainly by the service delivery uh, committee meeting next month, we will have some feedback from people that we can share with you. Oh, excellent. That's great. Um, and then on page um, 25 of our agenda and page 12 of your report, at the top there, it, it talks about supermarkets partnering with um, an for, for um, an anaerobic digester solution for non-eatable, non-donatable food. I'd be quite keen to hear more about that. Yes, I actually asked Sally Fraser if she could be online to just answer any questions about that. But are you there, Sally? Can you hear us? Yeah, I did say she was there. Yeah. Well, if there's a little bit of a delay, I've got another question while we're trying to locate right. S Sally. Or is she, is she there now? Are you, are you there, Sally? Can you hear us? Oh, here we go. Yes, yeah. I can. Yes, I can. Thank you. Wonderful. Sorry about that. Oh, no, that's all. It's great to see you, um, Sally, um, to be zooming in so you can um, just fill us in a bit more about that anaerobic digester solution, yeah, for that waste food. I'm quite interested. Yeah. In that. So um, it's it kind of flowed out of a bit of contact that I've made with local supermarkets, and they're doing a really good job. So they're donating a lot of food for humans, which is the best thing. They mm. are working on their stock levels to reduce waste at the outset, which is even better. Um, for Pack and Save, for example, also has a guy taking meat to make dog food, which is great. But they said to me they were having a problem with um, it's primarily packaged meat where people pick it up have a look say they don't want it and chuck it down and it pierces another one and mm. once it's pierced you can't donate it mm. even if it's still refrigerated so they mm. had identified that as a waste stream that they still couldn't get rid of with all the different avenues 
Mm. And um, through the kind of uh, just learning about and going to visit the anaerobic digester, I suggested that we do a little bit of a pilot. So mm. we've only done one month so far and we've got Pack and Save Tiamatu and Fresh Choice. And they have together, they have diverted um, 1,380 kgs of food. Goodness me. Wow, that's amazing. Yeah. 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 Yep. And, and, and the process... Yeah. Um, the process works well um, with that particular product, those products. Yeah, because obviously it would be going in with other stuff, wouldn't it? Yeah. yeah, yeah. And the anaerobic digester, it can handle fully packaged food as well. So they have the processing um, um, to actually separate the packaging. <clears throat> and they even take tin food, muesli bars, all that kind of stuff. So packaged, um, they don't have to remove the packaging, wow. which is really helpful mm. for the supermarket. Yeah. And they can take everything but we are still trying to um keep the supermarkets working on the food waste hierarchy to reduce their food waste first donate to humans donate to mm. um, animals and then what we can't do anything with then anaerobic digestion is an option so yeah mm. the pilot is just um a 50 50 um payment so i'm paying for half and they're paying for half um so it's just a way for them to try it without overly financially investing and then after six months, we'll get a report um, and we'll um, I'll leave it up to them to evaluate if they want to keep doing anaerobic digestion or whether they want to, um, you know, throw that stuff back in a skip bin, which I don't think they're going to do, but we'll leave that up to them because then they'll have to take on the full choice of the service. Mm. Full price, full cost. Oh, yeah, sorry. Right. Oh, look, that's a fantastic outcome, I think. Um, Thanks so much for uh, initiating it or making it happen, um, Sally. Really appreciate that. And it sounds pretty exciting, actually. So, yeah, wonderful. Yeah. Um, appreciate you being able to give us an update on that. No Any worries. Oh, Roger, um, Roger might have a question for you. I don't have a yep. question, just an acknowledgement of Sally. Um, I've asked Sally if she would be able to um, give a presentation to Grey Power. Oh. And Grey Power perhaps don't have the same kind of understanding of waste minimization and the techniques that are out there and maybe what they can do as an older sector of the population. So thank mm. you for responding to that, Sally. Mm. No problem. Excellent. Yeah, and hopefully we'll be able to see if other supermarket brands are keen to do it as well. So, um, mm. yeah. Mm. Okay, thanks. And I think I've got, a, I've got a question now from Phil Coles. Yeah, thank you. And um, thanks, Sally. You just add to what um, Roger was saying about grey power, there's a real confusion out there with the older generation I, my understanding is anyway with regards to what recycling and everything and what goes in a bin and what doesn't go in a bin and they can't just jump online. Not all of them can just jump online to get the information they want. So that would be a really good idea to come along and talk at some stage. So, yep. Cool. Thank you. Um, oh, Bruce, yes. Uh, Sally, with routine bin auditing getting underway, um, what how is that going to take place? I know it's been it's happened in the past, but what what penalties are there? You know, you can say, "Oh, well, I won't collect your rubbish," and they'll, it'll just get going put somewhere else. So, how how do you enforce anything? Um, so it's going to be exactly the same as last time. So they will get a tag on their bin, which um, can redirect them to our website, or for them to call us and find out um, what the issue is. So we really want to you know, redirect them to the simple seven things you can recycle. Um, so, yeah, they, they will get a tag on their bin. It'll all, all automatically be linked up through the waste edge tracking that we have with our trucks and stuff. The bin will be pushed back. So they're, they're, if, it's, if it's really serious contamination, their bin will be pushed back and it won't be collected. They will get a letter in their letterbox as well and also one posted out from us. So we are trying to engage them in learning, but, you know, we're talking mostly the ones that will get any kind of um, eventually removal of service is ones who are really grossly contaminating. It's not a coffee cup that people might think you can recycle. It's awful. Mm. So, you know, we're, we're really dealing with those who aren't um, respecting the service. So, yeah, so um, we're always willing to engage with people who want to learn and, and we would always be able to return the service. But the eventual outcome of extreme contamination um, would be removal of the service. And sometimes if it's really dangerous, that would be after one warning. Okay, thank you. Yeah. yeah right. Okay, uh, and Phil. Yep, thank you, Madam Chair. Um, the skip and road show, that looked like a lot of fun um, and, uh, and, and a good success, I, I, I gather, too. So um, 
what are other councils doing? Are, are you doing way more than what others uh, other councils are doing, or you know what? How we placed? How we seen around the country? You know what are we, what are other councils doing? Are you doing way more, or, or is this? Like Coles, how do you ask me that? Of course, I'm amazing. Yeah, well, exactly. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you are. Okay. You enthusiasm. Look okay, at you. so here's an indication. So next week we're going to our national wastemans conference. Um, we're having a territorial authorities day. There's five Picha Kucha presentations, and Waipa is doing two. Oh wow! Wow. So, cool. I think we. Yeah. Well done. And is there? Uh, at that conference, is there an award say, awards that, we've, that you can put there your name for? Sorry? There is awards, but unfortunately, their due date, I wanted to put that skip right. in consultation project board, but their cutoff date was the same day that we finished, so I couldn't actually apply, so I'll have to apply next year. Yeah. yeah. Are we? I think we, I can speak from all of us. We, we love your enthusiasm and uh, your smiley face and your report, so thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah, you're achieving great work. Uh, yes, Lou. Uh, thank you, through you, Madam Chair. Just, uh, Sally, you're doing a great job. Just one thing in collection. Um, I've had a lot of people asking when we're having another hazardous waste. I have had a number of people turn up with oil, of all things, uh, okay. in our collections every, every month, and we're just finding it quite difficult to sort of redirect them so I was wondering if we could get a date or something that we could advertise. And, and yeah. perhaps, I've been seeing them all down to my old workplace, but they have stopped taking it now. So <laughs> they haven't got enough oil. Yeah. yeah, we definitely were going to do, do that again. I was wondering whether, you know, towards the end of this year, which would be one year, or we push it out to 18 months. But I think, um, yeah, maybe we'll look around maybe November. Okay, cool. Yep. Any other Right. Any no, other questions for Sally? All right. Thanks so much, Sally. Um, appreciate you um, yeah, coming in um, virtually to our meeting. Um, Brian, I did have one other question uh, to do with the road and footpath service. Uh, you know, the you said on page 26 of our agenda or page, I think it's 18. Is that 18? Oh, 13, sorry, 13. Um, you said that there's a high workload and there's the risk that, um, you know, your team won't, be able to meet those KPIs. Yeah, I mean, how serious is that? Like, and and what um, what plans have you got to try and um, yeah hold the line? I guess try and keep that standard uh, that we've come to expect. Yes. Uh, thank you, Madam Chair. Uh, I, I guess it's um, it's always a combination of things that that cause these issues. Um, you know, staff absences or vacancies um, have you know. Uh, Several staff off on bereavement leave, and um, and yeah, the cyclones are a lot of extra calls and things uh, mm. sort of pouring in. So, um, because it's a an annual figure, so that we've got to try and keep this standard up the whole year through to um, make sure that ninety percent are attended to within that ten days. It can be a, a battle mm. uh, when the workload is high, and and the other thing that's obviously makes a high workload is, you know, coming to the end of the existing main maintenance contracts, signs and markings and general maintenance and having to retender mm. and get that ready. So uh, there is a high workload there. Um, uh, unfortunately, it does mean that some customers are not responded to within that 10 days, which can cause some frustrations to people. Mm. Yeah, and would be, you know, some of the reasons why counsellors will get calls or emails asking what's happening about this or that. Okay, um, thanks. You point out that it's an annual um, sort of benchmark, I guess, and uh, it's you, you, you're highlighting too that the impacts of the extreme weather events that, which we're having, you know, that's going to um, impact on on the performance, I guess, and we should bear that in mind, yeah, when we come to the review of, you know, be reported in the annual report and things like that, I guess. Yeah, I mean, I think that you've got an amazing um, team around you. Um, they're obviously, yeah, totally committed and, and yeah, doing their utmost. Um, but as you said, that that high workload and other pressures, yeah, are taking its toll. Yeah, but certainly the, the work that's done is greatly appreciated. Yeah, and no, no suggestion that it's not because, um, yeah, there's a you know, lack of engagement or unwillingness to try and meet those targets. Yeah, cool. So, oh, yes, Phil. 
just on that question, I mean, be like parks and reserves, you mentioned the cyclones, be the extra pressure that's come on on these groups and all these departments has been huge and budgets, you know, we're going to see that later on too as well. So, mm. um, so yeah, that, that's put a lot of pressure on them as well. So, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, it's great that it's raised proactively so that we are yeah, aware of the before we just yeah, get the final result, I guess. Yeah, so I appreciate that. So it looks like we've come to the end of all of our questions. Uh, thanks very much for your report. Uh, so could I please have a mover and a seconder that we receive the report? And I've got Philip Coles and Roger Gordon. All in favour, please say aye. aye. Against, carried. Thank you. Looks like you're staying um, in the hot seat, uh, but you've been um, joined by Eric. So we're on to our next um, item, which is the Tiara Rimu Kihikihi pathway. Um, welcome, Eric. I guess you're going to speak to this, um, yeah, really interesting um, project. Yep. Yeah, take it away. Thank you, Madam Chair and election members. Um, yeah, I guess if we can take the report as read and I can answer any queries. Thank you. Ah, yes, Lou. Yeah, thank you, through you, Madam Chair. Uh, Eric, with the uh, cul-de-sac, so the actual consultation, will that be street by street or will it be done in a, as a, a specifically to the whole of Kiki? So, because each cul-de-sac is going to be consulted individually or is it collectively doing the lot? It'll be to the wider community, but we intend to get feedback on individual streets. Okay. I think that's very positive. I think, you know, each individual one should be considered, I think, as, as it individually for each street, because yeah. they all have different issues and different uh, three patterns. Thank you. Now, I've got Andrew Brown online. He's got his hand raised. So, Andrew, um, would you like to, um, yeah, ask your question? Yeah, thanks, Claire. Um, so, I had someone make a comment to me that um, very much in favour of the project, but um, their comment was to, to future-proof it, uh, why don't we put an underpass uh, down by where the um, Oliver Street roundabout will be, so right opposite the, or to the to the uh, Kihi Kihi School. Now, way out of my pay grade, I know I'm not advocating it or not, I just wondered if you had a comment to that. Yeah, thanks, Andrew. Yeah, we've had that feedback as well from one person. Um, the volume of traffic um, just simply doesn't warrant it, and the cost of on the pass is would probably double the project cost. So it's Whitmore Street. Um, the, the the traffic flows and volumes that it's the solution for a road crossing is is quite um, quite ready. It's quite a um, suitable option in terms of a priority crossing, whether it's a zebra or a um, traffic signals. Oh, that's great. Thanks. I'm, uh, you know, I'm very pleased that it's been considered and um, yep, all good. Thank you. Thanks, Andrew. Um, Roger. Yes, through you, Madam Chair. Um, great to see this is going ahead. How long do you see that consultation taking and is that going to affect our intent of trying to get it done by June 2024? Through Madam Chair, thanks, Roger. The, so the consultation is a formal one month only um, open period for the consultation. And then depending on what's received, that may, um, that the people can be heard if they wish to. Um, so that would, we'd have to go to one, uh, one of the committees for a, uh, for a hearing, um, if that's what the submitters want. Um, and we have planned the project so that we start construction on the two roundabouts, which are not impacted by um, the cul-de-sac design option. So we, we have got a plan to deliver it on time um, regardless of um, any decision making on the cold sex. Great. No other question. Oh, Liz, do you have a question? No. No, but I guess, you know, we've done quite a bit of consultation already in terms of the open days. 
um, through Ahu Aki as well. We had all of the maps um, in the Kiki um, Hall. So, I mean, I'd like to think, um, in, and with the with the also the the Ahu Aki at Kiki School, I'd like to think that this has been well canvassed. Um, however, you know, there's always people that we miss. So um, through this consultation process, you know, happy to um, hear from people, um, you know, directly through the urban sort of, you know, the, the committee that we've got um, there, just because I'd really like to see this go quite smoothly. Mm. Um, you know, there, this is a big change for Kiki. Mm. Um, in fact, I jumped on my bike and went to the school, all the way from my help, I might add, um, just to have a look at how the pedestrian crossing works for the school in the morning. And I actually think that we've really, um, I think I think the option going forward is really good. Mm. Uh, and looking at the, the volume of, of students that are crossing, but also just how, how it kind of works. I just wanted to see it for myself. So look, I'm really confident that the solutions that we've suggested here are going to work really well. Mm. Um, and I just yeah, like to think that the community, um, you know, will embrace change because it is change and it's, mm. it's not easy. Um, mm. And it's a quite, a quite a big project for Kiki. So yeah, mm. look, let's just see um, how this process works, but certainly open to um, hearing from people directly if, um, if that's needed. Mm, that's great. Um, yeah, I'd just like to um, yeah, acknowledge too that it's, a, it's an amazing project for Kihiki. It's really, um, it does see lots of improvements for getting safe pathways, you know, to, to school and, and to the domain and, and linking up with Tilmutu. But like, I, I can see the, the cul-de-sac proposals, yeah, need to be handled well. Um, you know, it is a big change for the people that live on those streets. Um, yeah, so good that I think staff are aware of that and with that um, can that stakeholder group that's that's got community people on it as well, that the, the people's concerns will be heard and, and hopefully, yeah, um, the, the way it's designed will be really smooth. I did want to um, also note that the Space Centre was was listed as as um, a stakeholder that, that um, you've been considering, but I'm not sure whether or not you've actually spoken directly to them, because I think um, what's proposed for them like that bus stop, yeah, would be great. But um, have you talked to them directly? Uh, Madam Chair, I, I don't believe we have. Mm. I don't believe we have. Yeah, okay, well, hopefully that, that, that will happen with the consultation. And because straight across the road, just to the north, is um, the Rudy Mauta Maniapoto Reserve, yeah, um, whether or not that's going to create issues with safe crossings, with more people visiting the space centre and maybe just shooting across the road, yeah. But I see that there is a, a raised pedestrian crossing, yeah, just, just to the east of it. Yep. Yeah, yeah, great. You know, thank you. All right, so I've got a few more questions. I've got Marcus and then Lou. Yeah, and I think with the, the feedback that we're getting from the community is that killed sex um, are going to be a welcome change. And I think oh, we've got to be yeah. bold and, and brave with the, with the plan that we're doing. But also the data that we're gathering at the moment too, with the street counters and stuff, I think that's going to be quite important to see where the traffic is going at the moment too. So. Mm. Yeah, I've got every faith it's going to be, it's going to be great. Yeah, th thanks a lot, Marcus. And Lou? Yeah, just quickly, uh, through you, Madam Chair, the base centre was actually going to have a uh, bus uh, improvement, wasn't it, for, for the bus services. So there will be some integral work being done there, I thought, with uh, actually allowing children going to school or interchanging between buses on that location. Is that correct? Yeah, through you, Madam Chair. Uh, yes, Lou, thank you. Um, so outside the space centre on straddling the road, so both sides of Whitmore Street will be bus stops for the commuter bus to Hamilton. And also that's a big pickup for the Ministry of Education buses. Right. So it'll it'll be it'll it's been serve well, two functions. Yeah, well well pulled out, yeah. Um, Mike. Yeah, thank you through the chair. Um, just on page, I think, oh, it's just gone on page, maybe 14, there was something here about it being an award-winning project, which I think we hopefully all agree it will be. Um, through the consultation, through the design, and I guess through the implementation. So, so just ticking all those boxes, we have got something in mind to, to put this forward for, you know, to get some really good PR on this down the track. Is my question. Yeah, through, yeah thanks, Mike. Yeah, uh, yeah so if... Um, you come due next year, we think we'll have an amazing um, transformation for the, for the village. Mm -hmm. And um, looking at what other local governments is achieving, we think we're probably a whole step change above 
what others are achieving. Mm. So, yeah. That's fantastic news. Thank you. So I don't have any more questions. So we have our resolutions uh, on page 29 of our agenda. Uh, it's quite a lengthy one. I'm not going to read it all out. Uh, but I think Lou's going to move and Mike's going to second. All in favour, please say aye. Aye. Against, carried. Thank you. All the best, Eric. Um, look forward to some regular updates on it. Yeah, but it's, um, as you said, it's going to be an amazing transformation and we yeah, really looking forward to that. Thank you. So our next item is uh, page 47, National Field Days request approval for temporary road closures. Um, Brian, are you going to be handling this? Um, Madam Chair, I'd just like to have the report taken as read, thank you, and answer any questions you have. Okay, it's one that we've dealt with before. So any other questions from members? No? Cool. Excellent. All right. You're going to move. Um, thank you, Phil. Philip's going to move. And do we have a seconder? Oh, sorry, Roger move and Philip second. Sorry about that, Roger. Yeah. All in favour, please say aye. Aye. Against, carried. Thank you. That's great. And then the next one is on page 55, the Community Services Quarterly Report. Okay. So we farewell, Brian, and we welcome Brad. Morena, Brad. Looking forward to, yeah, you can, yeah, present your report, please. Thank you. Awesome. Namati um, Oteata. It is a lot warmer in here from where I've just come from, <laughs> especially those cozy. Thanks, Brian. <laughs> um, hey, look, I will take the report as read. I'll uh, just to go over a few uh, highlights that um, I thought would be quite cool to, to point out. Um, and that's some of our year two projects are progressing quite nicely. Uh, we've had really good success. Um, my mic is on, isn't it? Yeah. Um, with um, a couple of them, especially the John Cookoff Park um, football field um, installation there, that those, those sports field improvements, um, those are almost ready to go. And uh, the contractor contract did a great job um, throughout a pretty challenging wet summer. Um, it's a bit of a mess down there for a bit, but he, um, he managed to pull through um, and do a really, really good job. Um, we also had the, the Canberra Skate Park facility open in, um, in late March after the, we had a soft opening um, just prior to Christmas. So it was a pretty cool event that we had down there. Um, yeah, really cool to see those spaces in action eh? um, when, when they're really, really humming. So um, uh, a, a great one there. Um, and the bridges in Tiamutu Memorial Park um, are now in place and usable as well. There's still a couple of the um, interpretive panels to, to do on, on the sides of those once the design and fabrication has been completed. But um, yeah, it's great, great to have those in place. Um, also in, in early March, we had the opening of the uh, Tiamutu Education and Research Centre um, on, on the 5th of March, which aligned with International Children's Day. Um, really awesome turnout there. Um, the place was absolutely heaving throughout the day. Um, and, and we had our ecological partners in there, such as Go Eco, um, Umatotiri, Sanctuary Mountain, and Prongia Te Aro Aro, or Kahu Restoration Society as well, um, providing a bit of um, input about what they do and sharing that with the community and, and really um, get some good engagement. Um, since then, I mean, um, we've had lots of schools uh, coming coming through, um, really really good numbers and really positive feedback from um, the teachers and students um, going going through that space as well. Um, the school holidays was another really good opportunity for the, the museum to have people in, in there and. Um, it's really cool to hear some, some, some stories. There was a birthday party. Um, she got given the opportunity to go down to Uchonga Kiwi House or well, something else that she could choose. And she chose to bring her friends to the um, museum, which was uh, pretty, pretty cool. Um, obviously, we also had Cyclone Gabriel uh, in that last quarter. Um, and that had uh, our contractors and staff very busy. Um, We've largely completed all, all that work. There's just a couple of little bits of uh, mop-ups of ground reinstatement and things to go, but the the trees that we um, have have been identified um, have all been largely largely cleaned up now. Um, but hey, I couldn't be happy with the response um, that was as a result of that. Um, the contractors and community just jumped straight in um, and, and did a fantastic job supporting our our, our lead contractors and also our staff. Um, so yeah, thanks to everyone, including people around this table that helped out with um, getting out into the community and, and supporting people and, and our team. Um, that's. Uh, I'm happy to take any questions on, on the rest of the report. Thank you, Brad. I've got a question from Roger. Well, I, yeah, I've got three questions. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Three questions. Well, <laughs> Jolly good. Straight into it. Well, um, on uh, page three of your report, 
public convenience cleaning contract. You actually mentioned that the Tiawa Mutu Ice site, our toilet suffered fire damage, um, but no mention of the Cambridge Thornton Road toilets, which were actually totally destroyed mm. by fire. Have we any update on that like, cause of that? And do we have plan for replacement? Yeah, uh, thanks, thanks Councillor Gordon. Um, the reasons I mentioned in this report is it happened in, in this latest quarter, so this is just reflecting on the January to, to March window. But to answer your question, um, we'll be there insurances around that insurance can be at the moment on that. I don't have any detail on, on the cause or um, any follow-up from the police at, to hand okay. to moment. Okay. Um, second question. Um, Lake Take Utu, you mentioned the project implementation plan has been developed for the concept plan, and that's great, fine. When we look back at that LTP, which was now coming up to nearly three years ago, we, um, we had a cost. There's been a lot of inflation going on since then. With this continuation of that project, how do you feel your achievement of that project is going to be with under the, the increased cost that's there? There's also going to be some asset sales money going into there as well, and with the slowness in asset sales. So I'm just wondering that everything kind of is getting, might be delayed because of those factors of funding. Yeah, so, so you, you, you did write that the, these pro, uh, this project was um, funded solely by the SSLs. Um, we do have um, the tick of approval from the, the finance team that now that the, um, the, the plan of, of the asset um, divestment is that we're looking for, um, now that that's, that's been identified, they, they're comfortable with us to proceed with, with the project, knowing that there, there is a, um, a plan in place. As I understand it myself, I don't know, I don't know how far we, we've got with that, that plan. Um, I know the project team had some, some vacancies, but I'm not, I'm not entirely sure where that's sitting right now myself, sorry. I'd really like an update if, if you could okay. on the, what's still left on that plan and how the funding is going towards it. So, and I suppose the same thing is for Memorial Park as well. Correct. Yeah. yeah. And my final question, is the council collection and the art collection. We don't make enough of the fact that we have that art collection and there are some particularly good pieces of art in there. Um, and I'm just wondering, is there somewhere where we can readily see a list of that art collection and perhaps um, a, well, what the condition is, of those pieces, because you mentioned that this, you know, review of them, It'd be good to see them. Yes, yeah, so, so just to clarify your question there, sorry. Or just a list. Of oh, the list. Are um, what their condition is. Yeah, so um, we, yeah, we is, is, I'm just trying to find it in, in the report. Page six. No, oh, yeah. Um, yeah, we, we have, have largely completed that, that review now, um, and, the, and the stuff of digesting that, and, and bringing that together, um, and yeah, there is there's a list we can we can probably share that for the Friday mail out or something like that. Oh, okay, Susan, have you got a question? Yeah, relevant to uh, no, just further to um, Roger's question about the art collection. Um, uh, some must be about a month over a month or so ago now. I asked for staff to provide me with the with the list because I knew that there had been one compiled some time ago um, together with um, valuations and condition assessment <clears throat> if they were available. So I, I have I have that list and we have a um, a meeting set for the end of this month to discuss about a management plan around that art collection. I guess I was a bit um, mindful of the fact that um, we may have pieces in there that should possibly be on display yeah. and, and was keen to have a, have a, have a little bit of a re review about that. I'm, I'm not, um, I mean, I've had a look at the list and I'm not sort of casting any, um, making any decisions about that, obviously, from, from the list. But um, I'd be really keen to undertake some kind of um, 
project to improve the general appeal and feel of, of our buildings. And I know that there's going to be some work done in the entrance um, um, next July here. But I, I think, you know, if we've got some neat pieces of art either in the collection or with a desire to create more art, um, then let's have that discussion. I guess we're pretty limited with this building in particular around the, its its appeal. Um, so I'd be very keen to do what we can with what we've got and potentially with a view to acquire more on a really cost effective kind of way to to lift the um, the appeal of you know the aesthetics of our of our building as best we can. So hopefully that will come out of that uh, as well as the um, issues raised in respect of the, your item. Can I, can I su support Susan and plan? Definitely there. I personally can't see any reason in having good quality artworks and have them locked away in a cupboard where nobody can see them. It okay. doesn't make sense to me. Some of the, some of them are, have significant value, and of course, there's an issue around security as well. And and um, so yeah, we'll we'll have that meeting on the thirtieth, and um, at, in the forms of time, come back with a suggestion as to how how we go forward. But I'd be really keen to. I mean, I I don't know if most of you would have seen um, the enriched artist have painted me a glorious piece that's on my wall now. So I mean, I'd be really keen to look at and, and finding other ways we can engage with anybody in the community who. Who has a, um, a desire to help us beautify our buildings? And we might even have councillors who are willing to be models for, you know, <laughs> portraits and things like that. Oh, there you go, Roger. Yeah. yeah. I mean, I, I'm all too aware of the limitations of this building, but as, as I said to Gary, we may have been given a cactus, we just don't have to sit on it. So, um, and yeah, we okay. can do what we can with what we've got, right? Okay, thank you. Now I've got some other questions. I've got Mike and then um, Lou and then Phil. Thank you to the chair. Uh, thanks for your report, Brad. A um, couple of things. One is the John Kirkhoff and the success of that uh, upgrade of those soccer fields, etc. So I'm assuming the comms team will do something quite big around that sometime this month when it's sort of opened and the benefit of, because we I think we invest about 600k in there from memory. So that's, that's a fantastic job that's gone well. Hey, the other one is sort of a side shoot of um, page 63 sports field lease model. And um, just not for now, but I'd just be interested to find out there was a grant given to a group in terms of developing a sort of a sports hub concept, club sports hub concept on that piece of land, that Memorial Park, some years ago, and some work was done on that. Um, it's yeah, yeah, it was sort of led out of Hot Hotapu Club. So just, mm. just wondering where that's at and where... If that came to an LTP, how that might fit into any sort of lease arrangements moving forward. So it's not a question I'm answered now, but I'd just like to know sort of where that project got to and, and whether it would, would come back to the LTP. Yeah, um, you may recall, I think probably really last year, uh, we, we brought a, uh, a paper back to this committee. Um, so summarising that, that report and the, I guess, the recommendations that, were, that came over. And that, at the time, that was... Um, a conversation there to just because at the same time we also had the long-term plan and there's quite a handful of park park users across that space that we wanted different bites of the, the pie there so we kind of went back and we as staff we had a conversation with them around trying to um form a master plan for the for the site so that kind of that's what kind of came out of that report was that one club in isolation is probably not the way to go in terms of how can we hook into bringing all those people together on the, on the, on the same boat so we've had some staff conversations with them, um, and when we went back to them following following the council committee, um, or sorry, the service delivery committee, um, start of this year, the the feedback from the clubs was well actually because um, at the time we were recommending that we were happy, the, the committee was happy for them to go ahead with it, but they needed support there because there's no funding to go towards it. Um, the the clubs collectively were like, well, we don't really have any funding ourselves to go towards it and they kind of see it as a bit more of a council led project anyway. Um, so what's as a result, um, one of the clubs has gone away and they're doing their own sort of concept plan. And we're sort of trying to guide and, and shape that with the club that's driving that along with the, the other parties on that town belt so that there is a, um, a good line of sight and um, collaboration across that. So they are working together on, on that space at the moment. I imagine that there will be um, those clubs come into the long-term plan with some submissions as well. Oh, excellent. Good to hear. Thank you. Thank you. Um, um, Lou and then Phil. 
Yeah, thank you, Sri, Madam Chair. Uh, just quietly, uh, Brad, about Memorial Park, just a few questions. One of the things that you talk about was the three bridges, uh, the two bridges that have been replaced. Uh, RSA and would like to have naming boards on those to identify those bridges and the reason that they were there. That was always a part of as stakeholders of something that we'd like to do. So I think that needs to be quantified or put in to your plans so that we can identify the individual bridges, being Army, Air Force, Navy, and their names, uh, and what they actually represent. Um, the second thing is that the restoration of the Peace Fountain, what's the time frame on that at the present point in time? Um, so we want to try and get the um, Heritage Maintenance Plan done on that as well, uh, first, before we start doing any work on any of those, those features, just so we get around us and what's what the lay of the land is on, on those at the moment in terms of um, their structural integrity and, and what have you, and then what we need to do for, from a maintenance point of view going forward. So we'll be doing that piece of work first. Um, we are looking to engage a project um, internal, or, yeah, well, through our project delivery team anyway, um, a project manager for that project. And that's, that's just where we're at at the moment on it. So there is no um, clear time frame of when that might get restored. Thank you for that. The, the uh, final thing I'd like to last uh, Tuesday, I had a debrief for ANZAC Day, and the committee or the group of 20 that were there actually would like to pass on the thanks to your staff for the excellent work and preparation of both parks. So thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Um, Philip? Brilliant. Thank you. Thanks, Brad, for your report. Um, like uh, Tikutu, uh, page four of your report, um, you've got the third bullet point there vegetation management plan. There's quite a lot of, uh, on the Lakewood side of the bank, there's a lot of pampas, a lot of toy toy up there. Um, what's the plan with that? That's, can we get rid of that? Uh, yeah, we, we can probably get rid of that one. I know, it's, those, diff I know it's difficult, because you know, yeah. you've probably got to spray it. Yeah, and I guess the challenge is we want to make sure that we've got a, a plan to come in behind them and start planning behind them, because. Mm -hmm. While there are weed species, they're probably doing a little bank stability at the moment as well. So we just need to be careful that if we take them out, what are we putting back in their place to sort of keep that structure of the of the banks? So is that was that highlighted in or is that part of the management plan? Was it in the management plan? That will be part of the vegetation management plan, yes, which is not completed at the moment. Yeah. Yeah. Cool. Thank, Thank you. you. Um, I've got a few questions, um, Brad. On the next page, uh, page five of your report or page 59 of our agenda uh, under the Te Oumutu Museum, um, there's some reporting about the Te Arawai journey numbers, um, which I really um, am pleased to see, but I'd really like to um, sort of ramp up the detail of that so that we can have previous year's figures so we can see you know, how it changes over time, especially as, you know, um, we might be seeing more people using it, I guess, as it's the, you know, the awareness about the land wars and, and cultural sites in Waipa increases. Mm, that's great feedback, thank you. Yeah, and then um, on the page 61, so two pages over, page seven, uh, is about is it heritage, heritage interpretation. Um, I'm aware that, um, the Mangatotu to Pirongi Ecological Corridor Project is also doing a lot of work on heritage sites. It's been pretty amazing, actually. And I just want to highlight that and that I'd hope that staff might be able to liaise with them so that they can actually benefit from what that work's been done or even, yeah, somehow collaborate so that um, if there's not, yeah, I suppose the workload's shared a bit. Yeah, thank um, you. Our, our team are working with with that with that group. So, oh yeah, oh that's that's excellent. Um, and I just wanted to comment too that it's great to see the community board um, being involved with the new um, Cambridge Library project. We're yeah, looking at that. Um, I think that's so appropriate and um, good to see that. Um, I guess staff are yeah taking advantage of those people with all that local knowledge. Yeah, that's great. That's right. They've got some fantastic energy. Yeah, and, and lastly, I mean, there was some excellent um, information about the libraries themselves, and I was thrilled to see that some work's been done on, on what it looks like for non-library member use as well, because they are, um, I suppose, really important features of our community. It's not just about the books mm. and DVDs and things like that. Um, and I think it would be important work that could be, um, yeah, put to, to good value um, in working up 
you know, the proposal for a replacement library or whatever. Yeah, so, so yeah, well done for that as mm -hmm. well. Cool. Um, so, right, Susan, another um, question. Through you, Madam Chair. And to your point, um, Claire, around that heritage interpretation, the um, Nahana Pauri walking mm -hmm. walk trail group too might be uh, worthwhile linking with them um, in terms of that, um, those guidelines, because I know that they've got some spots in there they want to highlight too. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we, we are getting quite, a, and that's the, that's the reason why we're sort of doing this piece of work is we're getting quite a few groups coming to us now. Oh, okay. um, some of them very, very valid, some of them maybe not so. Um, okay. And so we just want to get that guidelines nice and structured so we can sort of, hey, this, this is what we're going to do for our interpretation if you want to tell, tell your stories, does it align with what we're trying to capture here? So, yeah. yeah. Excellent. Um, Liz? Yeah, I just wanted to make um, just, a, just a small point around the Cambridge Library feasibility study. So, um, so external, external support means, a, a, I guess, a consultant coming through to, to engage with our communities around um, putting together um, yeah, the feasibility study. But can we also include, um, as, as a key stakeholder in that group, the Cambridge councillors? Um, because there's a lot of conversations happening out there in our community mm. around a potential library, but what other services could be included in that um, potential facility? Mm. So I just want to make sure that Cambridge Council is a kind of uh, part of the, uh, is recognised as a stakeholder, I suppose, obviously, along with the community board and many other organisations, but there's just a lot of intel that I think needs to pass through to the consultants uh, <laughs> before they get too far down the track. Awesome. <laughs> good, good point, Liz. Thank you. All right, no other questions? Oh, thanks for a great report, um, Brad. Some excellent discussion point on that. Oh, sorry, sorry, Philip. You, you'll move it. Thank you, Philip. And a second, lose seconding. All in favour, please say aye. aye. Against, carried. Thank Kia you. Ora. Carry on with your great work. Okay, and then uh, our next item is request for new public road names on page 72. Our agenda. Oh, we've got some fresh faces. Um, yeah, welcome. Got James, Eva, and Mike. Or well, certainly Mike. Yeah, Mike and James. Thank you. Yeah, that's right. No, morning, Mike. And I'm not sure if we've seen um, James before, but if you'd like mm -hmm. to introduce him. Yeah. Yes. So this is James Brott, our, our graduate engineer, um, and I've recently moved over from Rata back into the. Uh, development engineering team so thank you thank yeah you. no it's great to have you here mike yeah we've seen you yeah like for um rma hearings and things like that as well yes that's yeah, right so, yes yeah, time ago, yeah, so, yeah yeah thank okay. you um so this morning uh, we just wish to uh present our report um on proposed road naming for a, a new subdivision in uh, cambridge um i take it that the uh report has been read and happy to take any questions Okay, thank any you. questions? All right, um, thank you. And Roger, questions? Yes, thank you. Through you, Madam Chair. Yeah, welcome to you both. Thank you. Um, going back about four or five years ago, I remember when the names went to the community board and we got Auntie Sally Drive and Uncle Bill Road. And, you know, it was, it was getting a little bit too much on that way. But... The process that we've got now, and this is perception of the road names that have come through this year, particularly on Cambridge, it appears that the road names now, because they go to EWI, the recommendation, but all of the road names that we're now getting in Cambridge are EWI road names. I'm wondering if we've just gone a little bit too far the other way and that we've lost a little bit of balance in the character that we're, we've got on our town becoming a little bit too the EWI side. Could you comment on that? And perhaps could you say how we could get that balance in the road names? Um, so the road naming um, is um, up to the developer to propose the road names. Um, you're absolutely right, there is a recognition um, of sort of historical past, um, and that's that's covered in the uh, in the policy, the the road naming policy. Um, so, as I said, the the developer is the, the person who puts the names forward, um, and they they are required to consult with EWI, but EWI often don't necessarily, or they they don't actually choose the names. The developer chooses the names which which are put forward to the committee. So, yeah. Just a simple diagram, uh, 
Correct. For, for this area, um, there has been a number of names gifted um, for, as you say, for some future roading, which is to go in this area. So, yes, there will be some more um, EV names coming forward. Is our policy currently a little bit too rigid in saying that consultation must occur? With you? So, um, so the developers are, um, are allowed to present um, whatever they propose, um, but through the consultation period with the EWE, um, obviously some of the EWE names are coming through. So that's, that's why we're probably seeing an increase in, in those names coming through. Okay. Okay. Um, can I just add to that? Just, just for balance, um, Roger, there have been developments in Tilmutu where the developer, for whatever reason, has presented names that have personal connection to their family history and Mana Whenua have endorsed those names and they hadn't been um, te reo names. So I, I, I think they're absolutely great names and, and I'm, I applaud the developer for for um, for doing that because I think in this instance, they connect really and tell a really great story about what happened what, what happened in that area in terms and of its importance to Mana Whenua. So I'm quite comfortable with it. And it's it's yeah, it's nice to see actually have some meaning rather than un Auntie Jan and Uncle Bob drive, you know? I think it's it's yeah, it's a real sure. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Thanks. Okay, nice good discussion. Yeah. Thank you. Just simply to quantify through you, Madam Chair, that in, within our minutes, it said that uh, we've actually got Hugo Shaw Drive. Yeah. That was previously yeah. a period. So that is already, we have a balance there, but that was done on the uh, 20th of September, 2022. Mm, okay. Um, and Liz, yes. Yeah, look, um, Roger, look, I, I agree with you that, um, that, you know, in this instance, it probably does look like we have a number of names but I guess on balance, you know, when we look at the last 10 years, it's, it's you know, it, it's just, you know, I guess, depending on where the influences are coming from. So I would like to, um, yeah, I guess we need to, we do need to continue to consider worthy names ourselves and encourage our communities to put those names mm. forward. There are some mm. very worthy recipients. Um, and I've, you know, I know I've personally put, um, and I'm not going to say names because that's inappropriate in, in this particular um uh, place but you know there are very worthy um, other names as well so I guess we just need to continue to encourage our communities to put those forward uh, to existing developers so um, yeah, yeah and, that's and what I'd like to and it's great that we do forward. have a policy actually because before it was an informal process but now you know we've got a policy about it so yeah. yes so yeah. very very I agree absolutely agree with Susan this is in this particular um, case I think it's very appropriate I think the names of um, yeah when I look through how they arrived at those uh, names I thought it was exceptionally appropriate and yeah I was very happy to see them but uh, yeah going forward I guess it's always that balance isn't it okay now I've got a I've got a question from Phil and then um, Andrew online has had his hand up for a, a while so I'll give him the chance after Phil and just carrying on from Roger too I mean um, there's a, another developer in Cambridge that put names forward and, and the opposite names were chosen. So I don't know what happened in that conversation. Well, I sort of do a little bit actually, but it's not appropriate to talk about that either. But mm. yeah, yeah. So the opposite did end up <laughs> happening. Yeah. And I know why. Yeah. Perhaps they were inappropriate names, Councillor Coles. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I heard otherwise actually. Okay, oh, well, uh, th thanks for pointing it out. I think we've had quite a robust discussion about that. Now I'll, I'll let Andrew Brown online have, have a chance to um, ask his question. Yeah, that, thanks, Claire. No, not a question. Um, I, just uh, my comment is that I, I think there is a reasonable balance of names coming through. And um, when I read through this agenda, the comment I've written beside this um, uh, particular piece was nice. So I thought these names were particularly appropriate. And on that Note, I'd like to move the recommendation on page 73, okay. both okay. A and B. Okay, uh, th thank you, Andrew. So I have a mover and a second. I'll, I'll, I'll let Mike do it since he's a Cambridge councillor. Yeah, all in favour, please say aye. aye. Again, it's carried. Thank you. I'll have to give you a chance later, uh, Lou. Yeah, cool. Thank you. Um, and so I think that um, completes uh, the business that we have um, with Mike and, and Jane. So thank you very much. And now we're going to um, have a resolution to exclude the public. 
Uh, so that's on page uh, 70, um, 79 of our agenda. You'll move and Lou will second. All in, uh, so that's Roger and Lou. 